I'd like to invite Marge Lampkin to come and to share a moment of witness for us. Good morning. Travis sat down there two weeks ago and came up with a twinkle in his eye and said, Marge, will you speak about what this church means to you? Wow. When? <laughs> How about October 30th? This is my mother's birthday, All Saints Day. But I have to go back to Parkway. Already I've been called. God said, I gave you a name and I called you. And I'd been confirmed, oh, this is a wonderful church, vibrant. We'd already gone through doing the wooden church. Now we had a big church. Oh, my goodness. And God had helped me to become educated. You are committed to me now. You have, you have confirmed, I have confirmed you. And you have convictions. You've got to go forth with courage, confidence. And I'm not through with you yet because I have a plan for you. I have a plan for good and not evil, for hope in the future. You know me, you pray to me, and I will listen to you. Oh my goodness, wow. And all of a sudden, Bob and I are in Wilmington. Last Sunday it came to me that we didn't choose this. God chose it for a reason. I need you there. You're my hands. You're my feet. I need all of you. And here I am. Well, I came up here, and my first greeting, we had come up in the middle of winter, and Cindy was only six weeks old, had Nana with us. Comes a knock at the door. We don't know anybody. We were south of Boston, and it's Dick Harding. Oh, he's at the door telling them about this wonderful Methodist church in Wilmington, and we'd like you to come. Not long after, three lovely ladies came to see us. Audrey Riddle's mother, Mrs. Irwin, Mrs. Woods, and Mrs. Anderson, inviting me to this church. And I'd already been a part of this marvelous church where we were doing everything. I walked to church, my mom worked, she was in a unit, you have circles. My dad had helped, and they'd had their down times, but they still believed in God. And I came here when my sister had just been killed by a drunk driver, and I'm questioning, why God? And Dudley Buck is our lay leader, and he gets up and he speaks, and he has just discovered the chip. He's part of MIT, and he's confirming that there is a God. Think about it. So here I was, and I, so first thing I taught Sunday school, I've been in the choir at Parkway. I need you, says God, I need you to teach. I've taught you to teach Sunday school. Now you're a leader, and you need to teach somebody else. Oh my goodness. But there I was with the preschool, absolutely loved it. Dot Fairweather, Jeannie Jacobus were under me, and we were in the old wooden Roberts house. We would have 40 to 50 preschoolers. And we, and we were teaching Sunday. We were making our own Play-Doh. We were sitting down every week and planning what we were going to do for the next lesson. Talk about fun. Oh my gracious. Well, I'm not through with you yet, says the Lord. I'll give you time off, okay? Your mother-in-law's got Alzheimer's and I'll let up, but you know, I'm not through with you yet. <laughs> so anyways, but I got into circle because we had units in our other church and my mother was just loved it. And I'd sat around with the ladies with my little sewing machine, imitating them when they were making things for the fair. I think of Mabel Butt, another one of our saints. All right, here we go. I'm not through with you yet, Marge. And now I, Willis Miller. And now it's time to give you a rough road, Marge. Suddenly you're in the hospital. Willis Miller is your pastor. You've been told that they're gonna take your colon. Oh my God, I'm scared. And Willis comes, and later the doctors come to me and say, could we experiment on you instead of 
opening you up. Oh, thank you, God. He was there. The church was there. This wonderful, wonderful church. All right, now I gotta put you back to work. You thought you were never gonna teach again? You're going to work at the North. And who's at the North but Jay Miller, Reverend Willis's uh, wife, great friend. God, God said to you, I will put the right place, people at the right time where you need them because you belong to me. Wow. And on and on it goes, and I could go on forever. But that was in the 73. In 80, oh my goodness, I'm going through what my parents did. My son's just, our son's been hit by a drunk driver. Please, Lord. Don't, I don't want to lose him. I lost my sister, please. And God hurt me. And Bill survived. Wow, he is listening. Take a deep breath, March. So here we are in the 80s, but I'm not through with you yet. Yeah, now it's time to hit your husband. You know, you have the ups and you have the downs. And Joyce said to me just the other day, you gotta be up in the mountain and, and, and feel the, the valleys to really appreciate. Oh my heavens, I'm teaching school. Bob's had a stroke. How is this all going to end? God said, I'm going to take him, Marge, but you're going to be strong enough because I'm with you. And I'll prove to you that I can take care of you. So who does he have at the high school but this wonderful Aunt St. Audrey? I'm really getting personal, but she was there because she needed to be. I needed her. I had to go on a new job. Where does his strength come from? Not from me. And that's how it was. And then there was a need, Herb was building the church. And, and I really, at Parkway, I had invested in this church and didn't even know it. Because we'd done God's talent dollars. And Dr. Pierce had passed out a dollar to everybody in the congregation. He said, make it grow. Well, like kids, you know, we're enthusiastic, we're having a great time, we made it grow. But we didn't realize what it was doing was going to the conference. And lo and behold, they wanted to build a new sanctuary. And where did they go to but the conference? My money was already there. I was already invested in this church. And it had to keep going. I learned in Sunday school, you give every week. And look what's happened. Well, Herb came and we needed another addition. That's when our circle went over to Deming Way and we got up to 28 because before that you could only have a few people in a house. Oh, we need some help with you, Marge. I gave you talents. You can play the piano. Oh my goodness. Yes, I could play the piano. My mom had been in a nursing home and I had been, I just loved going to Woodbriar. It was right in my backyard. I think God put it there for a reason. Okay, and, and people were there that I knew from the church because this church services everybody from the young till the day they die and even afterwards. So I played the piano. That was fine. The girls were there for the choir and, and, and they were doing the worship. When Rick Black came, well already I'd had two pastors that had been in my family. Number one was Mike Stotts and, and Peggy. That's where my folks passed it down on the Cape. And now here's Rick Black, who was the pastor at my twin brother's church. And he's here and I tell him, I'm the twin. Well, so what? But you know, Janice had cancer. And sometimes those, there's a plus to these things. And I said to Rick, can't we keep going to Woodbriar? It's needed. I saw it with my mom. I could play the piano and I could tell stories and I got the girls from the church. How about it? Well, keep going. So there I was again. Didn't intend to do it, but it was more fun. I could go on and on, but Travis said you got two or three minutes. But the point, <laughs> the point is that God has been with me. He's answered my prayers. He took Nana 
before she had to go to a nursing home when I said, oh, please, Lord. He took my husband when I said, please, he's in such pain. But what I'm going to be able to do when he's gone? If you were here, the church has been here, and we're needed more than ever in this world right now. So please, keep this church going. All the saints, I walk in here, every time I walk in, I see the saints. I look at that beautiful cross up there with the light behind it, and who do I think of but Bob Belbin, okay? I go into the coffee room, and it's less white that put up the curtains. When we had the fun of making them, it's been a chance for opportunities. It's been a chance to give priceless friendships. And we believe in our good Lord, and we believe in his word. That's all I've got to say. Now that you've heard an incredible, powerful sermon, thank you, Marge, because God is not done with us yet.